we're going to take it back to basics with this video. We need a path for this lawnmower to get to that grass without dragging it through this lava rock. First step is remove all the gravel from where you want the concrete. You don't necessarily have to haul off this gravel. It's a better idea to go and take it and disperse it throughout the yard where you're not pouring the concrete. One of the most important things with concrete is you need to slope the water. So right here is pretty easy. We want to slope it away from the house. But over here it gets a little more complicated. So this little slab is already sloping. So we're going to pour up against this. That kind of sets our elevation. You still want to run it off the house. we got to go under this gate. But then we don't want to slope it to the wall. So we'll have to make a valley right down the center of this whole thing. But then that valley is also going to have to be sloping towards the street. We're probably going to break it up on some point and slope a little bit of it to the backyard. Maybe not. We'll just have to see. Actually, we probably won't. We'll probably slope it all to the front yard. That way you don't have to worry about anything flooding later or undermining the footing for the wall or getting underneath the house slab. This is kind of what we're going for. I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but the gravel's approximately four inches taller than where the dirt is. So now we've pulled back the gravel so we've exposed the foundation. That way we can drill some rebar into the sides of the foundation in a few spots. It'll stop the concrete from ever sinking. There shouldn't be any settling issues anyways, but it's just better safe than sorry. As well as this little slab of concrete. And then it also gives us a good idea of what our grade needs to be, so we can kind of match that in our rough grade. And then the next obstacle is that gate, because we need the concrete to obviously go below the bottom of the gate so that the gate can still freely swing open and close. On this particular house, it has this block wall on top of these retaining blocks. They're big old retaining blocks, but anyways, that kind of sets the limit for how much we can slope this because the bottom of the concrete has to sit on top of that and no lower. We're going to have to add some expansion joint along this block because we want the block to be able to move independently from the house. And if we tie that all in with concrete it gives it no room to expand and contract and do what it needs to do and you might end up with cracks in the wall or cracks in the foundation later. You did it! Okay, get back here and do it more. There's a lot more left. Okay, now we got it roughly three and a half, four inches below the grass there. There's gonna be a little path going into here. This will all be concrete to up against the, the block wall. We're gonna keep that slab and just integrate into it. More concrete, so we moved all this gravel. I shovel. It was lame. And then at an angle from the corner of this column to that joint right there. We'll all be concrete. So we're pretty much ready for the two by fours. These are just regular wood stakes. They're a foot long. You can get them at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or whatever. And we're forming most of it up with regular 2x4s. These are eight penny duplex nails. They have a double head so you can drive them into the wood and then still be able to pull them really easily. It's not like framing, you're, you're gonna want these easy to pull. This stuff is basically MDF. You can find it in the concrete section in a hardware store. It's as tall as a 2x4 so that way it will match up with the rest of your forms. You can also make it out of siding or you can rip down plywood or whatever you want but this stuff is easier. Easier to work with. It bends nice and easy and it matches up with the 2x4 on height. You're going to want your concrete to slope away from these block walls 
As you can see, it's sloping in the one direction to the left. You're also going to want to slope the concrete away from the house. You definitely don't want any water going and staying on the foundation. Run it out to the landscape or run it out to the street. <laughs> Generally speaking, you want the rebar on the bottom half of the slab where it can tend to stretch the most. So drill it about two inches down, or maybe a little bit further. You don't want to drill it too close to the top because it could chip out on the top. Same with corners of concrete. You want to keep it six inches or more from the edge of whatever slab you're drilling into. This is number four bar. It's a half of an inch thick. video. What? what?